uh, on the live desk, Senator Orrin Hatch, of course, was one of those senators who initially crossed the aisle to hammer out a compromise bill. But last week, he dropped out of it. It was a group of seven, now a group of six, saying that the White House and congressional leaders were the ones standing in the way of a bipartisan compromise. We're pleased to have Senator Orrin Hatch joining us now. He, of course, is a member of the Senate Finance Committee. Senator, welcome. Good to have you here today. Well, nice, nice to be with you. Talk to me a little bit about when you look at what's being worked out now in that same group of six, uh, some of what is getting out there is a 35% tax, possibly, on you know the, the sort of Cadillac plans that are out there, the, the best of the best health care plans. Uh, that's among the things that are being ironed out. Is there anything happening in that group of six right now that has changed your mind about whether or not you would be willing to go back to the group and sign on? Well, not that I know of. I think that the uh, chairman is trying, trying his dead level best to try and come up with a bipartisan deal, but he's very limited in what he can offer because of the other very liberal uh, Democrats who are kind of dictating what has to be done. Look, the president's speaking to the uh, AARP right now, and yet uh, they've come up with this IMAT uh, approach, which, uh, which IMAC approach, which would be the Independent Medicare Advisory Commission to put bureaucrats between you and your doctor and frankly the ration care for especially senior citizens right while he's speaking to uh, uh, to the uh, AARP so these are the type of things that just uh really have get, caused me a great deal of concern. You know, we just heard from Senator Kerry a little while ago. He said that he thinks they're making a lot of progress in coming up with a plan that would pay for a trillion dollar health care plan. He said, I think we're about 200 billion shy of kind of figuring out where all this money would come from. What do you think about that? Well, they're talking about one trillion, but by the time they get through, it'll be one and a half to two trillion dollars, and maybe even more than that. And keep in mind, you ask about uh, the Cadillac plans. What they want to do is tax the insurers rather than the insured, uh, rather than have an exclusion and tax those that are above the exclusion. And that was that failed back in 1993 and 1994 when Senator Bradley brought it forward, and and uh, you know, it just people really got up in arms about it. Uh, and uh, the people who got the most up in arms about it were the unions who have uh, the Cadillac plans sure. in many cases. You know, I think there is so much widespread confusion out there. People hear all these different plans, and, and the main thing they want to know is what is it going to mean for me? What is it going to mean, mean for my family? You've been around watching the way things work in Washington for a long time. What's your best estimate right now at what people can expect will change for them as a result of all this? Well, keep in mind they've passed two very... Uh, very partisan bills. The House uh, Committee is trying to pass a very partisan bill over there, a Democrat bill. In the Senate, the Help Committee passed a Democrat bill out of committee. Both very, very liberal bills, both going to cost an arm and a leg. And then Senator Baucus is trying to bring about a bipartisan bill, but he'll get in the middle of those two and they'll just crunch him uh, in conference. And we're going to have the most liberal doggone health care program you've ever seen. And I think millions of people will be under their Medicare expansion approach forced to go into Medicaid rather than have their own private health insurance. Most importantly, there will be, in my opinion, a government plan where the government runs health care. And look, uh, Medicare is already $39 trillion in unfunded liability. Why would we turn everything else over to the federal government that can't even manage Medicare very well? And now they want to take money from Medicare to be able to solve these problems. I tell you, I don't see much hope in getting a bill that the American people will support one other aspect, they have a provision in, the, in both of the, I think the House and the Senate uh, Health Committee bill called uh, comparative effectiveness. When we tried to make sure that that could only be used for clinical purposes, in other words, good health care, and not for rationing, and they shot down every anti-rationing right. vote that we brought up. So we're getting to that, and that's the only yeah. way they're going to be able to save money the way they're going. All right, so it sounds like you think that uh, in the end it will get rammed through, uh, and we know you feel strongly about this, sir. We thank you very much for sharing your views with us today. Well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it will get rammed through. I think they're going to have a really, really rough time when the American people figure out what they're trying to do to them. I'm hoping that, that we can stop, and we have at least five Republican programs that would do a far better job at a lot lower cost and yet still cover people who need to be covered without ruining the private health care system. All right. Well, maybe they'll get an earful, everybody, when they head back to their constituents over the break. Uh, Senator, thank you so much for your time today. Good to have you with us. Nice to be with you.